consider. This particular uh, tutorial is about using layer masks and applying patterns um, through layer styles and through edits uh, fill, edit, edit, edit fills. So the first step is um, I need to select my subject. So I'm in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 20, 2021 and there is an awesome, awesome new um, t uh, technique here that I can do select subject. So rather than going and using the selection tools, when I click that select, select subject, it's going to select the subject for me. And I purposely chose this royalty free images from pexels.com because she's got this messy bun with all this crazy hair. And you'll notice that it really went in and tried to select as best it could. Once I do my selection, if I switch to a selection tools, then you'll see that I'll get this option select and mask up at the top here. With the select and mask, I can go in and fine tune my selection. I can go and look at it against different colors. Oh, look at that. Even the, the select subject even picked up the opacity there. Um, I can look at it against different colors to see what's going to end up looking like. I like to look at it in the black because it shows me what those edges will look like really well. Um, I can come in here and I can, I can play with the selection a little bit. I can add to it. I can smooth it. Um, this is with the toggles. If I wanted to fine tune it even further, I could use what's called my layer masks. So when you're in the mask mode, mask selection mode, then I use my paintbrush, paintbrush with black and white. I have to go back to fault black and white. I use my paintbrush with black and white to add or subtract from the selection. Let me zoom in. I'm going to do Command plus. I'm on a Mac. If you're not, if you're on a PC or a Chromebook, it would be Control plus. And so I'm going to use black. And this is how I can go in and I can really fine tune. Now this looks like, wow, Nix, you're really in close here. But you know what? That's how you get a really sharp selection, right? I want to make. And actually, my brush is way too small. I'm using the brackets next to the letter P to kind of clean that up a little bit. But um, I don't. I you know, for my movie poster, I might not even use all this hair. So that doesn't necessarily matter. But I'm just going in and making sure that I have my full. Selection selection in here, right? That the edges are clean. Right now, I just hit the space bar and that turns my cursor into the hand tool. So even though I'm zoomed in, I can move around and see what part of the image, how, what the selection is going to look like. All right, let me zoom back out again so I can see the whole thing. Selection looks pretty good. Um, that's That select subject is pretty fantastic. That is new with 2021 and just outrageously good. So I'm going to go unmask it, right? Now I've got my selection. I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to move it into my new document. I have a new untitled document. Just a reminder, so we're always using File New. These are images that we're going to be printing, right? And so I want to do for print, I want to choose letter. And this is going to be a movie poster, so I'm going to go poster. I want up and down. Let me give it a name right now while I'm at it, right? Um, movie poster. Okay, so that's going to save. All right, so now I have two untitled documents, right? One movie poster and one is this my other. Let me get rid of that. Okay. Don't save that. Okay. So here's my movie poster doc. Here's the, the brainstorm. Here's my selection. Okay. I'm going to grab my move tool and I want to go ahead and move her onto my background. So I'm going to start here with my star, right? I want to start by, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit, right? Went to the corner. I want to start with my star. She should take up about two thirds of the image here. I might end up cutting some off at the bottom there for my credit block. And I might even end up changing her clothes, but for this is what I want to start with. Okay, so according to my mood board, I was going to use Mila Kunis, but I decided to go with this high resolution photo of this other woman that I found instead, royalty free off pexels.com, like I said earlier, but I still want to add the scale. So I found actually some different scales. It's like a lizard skin. What I'm trying to go for is I'm trying to, to mimic the lizard from Spider-Man movies. So I'm going to go to edit. I have this image open, this pattern, this texture. You can go and find any pattern or texture online. And I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to define pattern. That's going to create a pattern that looks like that lizard skin, right? There it is right there. So it's going to look like this. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So now um, I've got a lizard skin pattern. So what does that mean? Well, let's go to my movie poster now. There's several ways that I can apply this pattern to this body, right? One way to do this is first I'm going to duplicate this layer. Command J is my duplicate that's my keyboard shortcut to duplicate. Otherwise, you can go up here, right? And you could choose duplicate layer. Um, I want to give that layer a name. I'm going to call it my texture layer. Okay. 
Um, you could also go to layer here and duplicate layer. That's another option as well. So in this layer, the one that's above the actual photo, right, I'm going to add a layer style. So I'm going to click on the effects. I'm just going to pick on the first option, which is my blending options. And then I've got this special dialog box here. So what I want to do here is I want to add a pattern overlay. And that pattern, I want to choose. I've already done this a demo, but I want to choose that pattern that I got there. And you've got other ones in here too, right? Here's a grassy pattern. Look how cool it is. These are these, some of these, the ones that are in folders up here are already there. Oh, that one's kind of neat. Oh, that's really cool. These are already here in Photoshop, right? But these are the ones that I created. Here's a glitter pattern I created, um, but I'm going to go to the scales. Okay. So now that I'm in here, you can see that it's it has a blending mode, right? So I can adjust or change the blending mode here. Multiply is a good standard, although you might find something else that you like. Opacity is how much, right? So essentially, you're seeing it being applied because it's just here. Then I can go in and I can play around with my layer modes, right? What happens if I blend this together in different ways? Well, I got news for you. There's there's something on here, right? So because of this, you can't use the modes there. You can't use the modes there because I have it at full opacity. If I lower the opacity here, where you can adjust the modes instead of playing with the opacity is here. So you're going to have to do it in the actual pattern um, in the the layer style itself. So you can find one that you like in here as you're kind of going, oh, that one's kind of neat. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So it doesn't necessarily go, this this doesn't necessarily matter. Um, what, it does matter, actually it does matter, but it matters once you already put it on in the pattern overlay itself. So you have to do it in the layer style itself. Ooh, look at that. Some really cool options that are popping up here. Okay, so let's say I want to remove some of this, though. I just did that pretty easily where I applied it to the whole layer. How do I remove some of it? Well, that's where the mask comes in. That's what this icon is for. In mask mode, right, this is like a mask that I put on top of the picture, the image. I'm going to want to use my default black and white, and black will hide while white shows. So let me make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm using the brackets next to the letter P. I want to remove, let me zoom in, right, I want to remove the texture from the hair. So I'm going to use, oops, I want to use black, right? Black hides from the mask and white shows. So now if I do this, it'll remove the texture from the hair. I might actually remove the hair off the, the person here completely, but um, this will remove the texture, right? And and let's say I did too, like I got too much, right? Like, so I'm, I'm using a big brush and I'm moving kind of quickly. I'm going to move myself, I'm going to kind of move myself in like this. So now that I did that, white will bring it back. So if I flip back to white, let me lower my, the size of my brush, right? I want to bring that texture back on. Now, certain things you're going to want to pop out as well. Like, well, I want to be able to see her eye, right? So I'm going to kind of let her eye show through. Now, what I'm when I'm as I'm doing this, right? You can see the line, like you could see because this is a I'm using a hard brush right now. So if I switched to a softer brush, right? Here's 100% hard. Here's very soft. Then when I brush it on, you can see that it can I can get like kind of a a softer edge to it. And I think that's what I probably would want over here by the eye, right? I want to have a softer edge so you can maybe see the eye a little bit, but it's not overwhelming, right? There we go. So here's me. I might change the color of her hair as I keep going. But so black hides and white shows when you're in this mask mode. That's in key, that's key, right? So if I switch back to black, oops, where's my mouse? There it is. Uh, if I switch back to black, I could like take the, the texture off that. And you can see in the mask here, right, you can see that. I can actually just throw the mask away if I made a mistake, if I wanted to. Okay, so I want to show you another way to do this. I'm going to turn this off, right? In this other option, I need to create a selection of the body that's on this layer. So I'm going to hold Command on the keyboard. See that little selection pops up? Command on the keyboard. For you PC users, it would be Control. And I'm going to click, and that will load up a selection of everything that's on that, sla that layer. Now, I just wanted the selection because now I'm going to create a new layer, a brand new blank layer. There's nothing in it, and I want to fill it with a color, right? So let me go. I'm going to go default again. I got white in the back. That's that's good. I'm going to do command delete and that's going to fill the selection with just a white fill. It just has a white fill in it. So you can see it's right above this one right here. So in this fill, let me get rid of my selection or in this layer, right? I want to actually, maybe I do need that select. Let me select that again. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to choose fill. And with this fill, now I want to pick that pattern again. So it's going to fill this selection with that pattern. 
There we go. Now this one I'm not going to be able to see until I hit OK, but the nice part about this is I can play with the modes in here. This is where it's going to allow me to blend the modes this way. So if you would rather do it this way or you'd rather do it as a layer style, ooh, that's two different ways that you can apply those different um, layer styles. Now I'm actually, I'm doing it all over the whole body, but you might have a reason why you'd want to do little bits here and little bits there. You don't want it to look consistent. If it looks too much like a pattern, that's not necessarily going to work, right? This doesn't look too much like a pattern, although I can see a line through the center. So if I wanted to, I can separate these selections into separate parts and apply the patterns to it. Although what I'm going to do with, I think, my final project, look at that. See what I just did there? That created, a, I had the selection there, so when I clicked on it, it just created the mask. So now if I take the paintbrush and I got black, and I, I could just add to the mask, right? If I want to add this jacket to the mask and take that texture off of it. Now, with a circular brush, sometimes it's hard to get in those corners. So what I like to do is I sometimes will switch over to the lasso tool, and I'll free draw the edge of the selection. This is not very good. Oh, yeah, not so bad. And I'm going to go all the way back to where I started. And now I can take my brush. I could just kind of, I can make it super big and just go wah, wah, wah and finish it off. Get rid of this selection and you're good to go. All right. So in addition to the texture or the pattern, I also, oh, there's actually, you know what? Hold up, hold up. I got one more way to add that texture. Um, I'm going to create another duplicate just so that, oh, let me duplicate of this layer, Command J. This is a duplicate of this one because um, I want to show you this last one. And this last one is the pattern stamp. So I can paint. I can just paint it on too, right? Let's see. Here's my, my um, pattern that I just created. I've got my stamp. Look, it's already set to multiply and a soft brush. So if I were to zoom in here, then I should be able to just, yep, there we go, just paint on the pattern. Now, it's going beyond the borders of her face, right? So that, well, actually, that looks kind of cool. But if I wanted to make sure I didn't, I could do that command click or control click if you're on a PC. I'm clicking on the thumbnail, right? And then that way, when I add the pattern, it'll stay within the selection that I created. This might be, I mean, like, maybe this is the best way to do it. Like, like say I wanted to see the lips that were there and her eyes. Now, the only problem with this is I believe that you have to change the mode before you begin. Otherwise, you can, well, actually, you know what? That could be a cool way to kind of show different effects, right? Different way colors are kind of built up on each other. That's kind of cool, too. So three ways to do it, right? I did it three different ways. I um, duplicated it. Here, I duplicated it, and I, um, I applied a layer style. In this one, I selected it and I put the edit fill. And then in this one, I just painted, painted on using the pattern, what was it called? The pattern clone, clone pattern, something like that. What's that, what's that called? Pattern stamp, the pattern stamp, that's what it's called. Okay, so in addition, right, to adding some kind of texture to the person, you're also going to have to add some additional items as well. Here's my other version of this, right, where yeah, I got my title logo going, I got my credit block, which I haven't edited yet. Um, I've got her, um, I kind of painted onto one of her eyes. Let's see, how did I do that? Well, I did that by using the color replacement tool, right? So let's say I wanted her hair to be a different color. Let's just say I wanted her hair to be dark, medusa -y even. Let's see, I got a lot of different layers kind of built up here. So this is the color replacement tool. I'm just kind of changing the color. Maybe I don't, maybe I want it to be actually this like tealy blue, right? Like this blue here. Oh yeah. Like a blue black. Maybe it'll give it a little blue tone. The color, oh there we go. The color replacement tool, ugh. It's not great, right? But it's a really good way to like quickly select and kind of paint on to an area if you want to kind of do something like that. It works well for that. It doesn't work well. It Everything it does is kind of light. It doesn't do very well in like big areas or realistically, but actually that's kind of cool and a neat color for her hair to change it. So I did that with the color replacement tool. And the other thing that I found, maybe I would change her clothes or I found this cool forked tongue. Let's try this, select. Subject. Let's see what happens. I want to put this forked tongue coming out of her mouth. Nice. It's fantastic the way that works. Watch this. Alt or here. Alt subtracts. Option or alt subtracts. So I don't want any of the rest of the lizard. I just want the tongue. So I'm making a whole loop around the part I don't want. There's my tongue. Great. Now I got my tongue. There's a little A on there because it's coming from somewhere else. But I'm modifying quite a bit. Oop, got a little A on me there. Oops. 
it's modifying quite a bit. And so I can kind of, I've been making it my own along the way. So um, let me rotate this around. Uh, let me flip it here. Watch this. Hold shift. So unconstrain the proportions, but to get the mirror image, I could have also went, oops. Could have also went to edit transform. Stay like that. Okay, let's rotate it again. How is it supposed to be? How do I want it to be? I want it to come out here and then, yeah, let's do that. Oh boy, where'd it go? Oh boy. Oh boy, there it is. There it is. Actually, that looks pretty cool. Like her, Like she's shedding her skin. That's kind of a neat idea for a lizard to have them shed their skin. Okay, so tongue, let me rotate it. I want it to look like it's coming out of her mouth. I clearly don't need the whole tongue, but maybe like right about there. Ooh, yeah. All right, and at that point, I could start working on my background. I mean, I, obviously there's things that I could fine tune and there's things that I can edit better than this, but I just wanted to give you all those different versions on how you can use the layer mask to select. You can use the layer mask to hide from a layer. You can like, use the layer mask to hide from a layer that you've, um, added a layer style to. You can use the pattern stamp. There's so many different options to you can use to add pattern or texture to your work. Okay, I'm excited to see what you'll make. Have fun.